Welcome to the Meritor Just-in-Time Clutch Adjustment and Reset Procedures video. The most important step to prolonging the life of a clutch is ensuring it's correctly adjusted. No matter if you're doing preventative maintenance or installing a new clutch, understanding how to validate the adjustment of the clutch and adjusting if required is vital to the operation of the vehicle. This just-in-time video will review the steps to check the adjustment on manual and self-adjust clutches that utilize a clutch brake for non-synchronized transmissions, the steps required to adjust a manual clutch, and finally, the steps to reset a self-adjusting clutch. Meritor clutches are adjusted at the factory to OEM specifications. When installed, adjustment must be verified and minor adjustments may be needed, especially if using a resurfaced flywheel. Failure to properly adjust a newly installed clutch could result in the clutch not functioning correctly. For 14 and 15 and a half inch clutches, use the following steps to verify the clutch is adjusted correctly. For non-hydraulically operated clutches, check the clearance between the yoke tips and wear pads on the bearing housing for 1 8 inch clearance. This determines clutch pedal free play. Note, clutches with hydraulic clutch release systems will have no gap between the release fork fingers and the clutch release bearing. If clearance is not 1 8 inch, adjust the mechanical clutch linkage to increase or decrease the yoke to bearing clearance. Note, never use the internal clutch adjustment for this adjustment. Check for proper clutch brake and bearing gap of 1 half inch to 9 16 of an inch. If the gap is too small, verify the clearance between the clutch cover and the release bearing. If this dimension is correct and a fiber spacer or oversized clutch brake was installed, remove the fiber washer and or replace the oversized clutch brake with a standard thickness clutch brake. If the gap is larger than 9 16 of an inch and the clearance between the clutch cover and the release bearing is correct, then one of the following conditions exists. A fiber spacer and or oversized clutch brake was not installed or the transmission bearing retainer is worn excessively. Do not adjust the clutch until the cause of the excessive brake to bearing gap is corrected by replacing worn components. If the clutch does need adjusting, turn the adjuster and set the clearance between the bearing and clutch brake at 1 half inch to 9 16 of an inch. This dimension is critical. Do not vary either over or under these dimensions under any circumstances. Reminder, the bearing must move a minimum of 1 half inch or the clutch will not release. Eliminate lost motion before checking for 1 half inch of movement. Lost motion is generally caused by loose or worn linkage or a worn yoke or cross shaft bushings. If an internal clutch adjustment was made, verify the 1 8 inch clearance between the yoke tips and wear pads on the bearing housing. If necessary, readjust linkage to obtain the proper clearance. Note, clutches with hydraulic clutch release systems will have no gap between the release fork fingers and the clutch release bearing. Verify the clutch brake squeeze by inserting a 10 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge between the bearing and clutch brake, then depressing the pedal to the end of the stroke. The feeler gauge must be tightly clamped between the bearing and the clutch brake. This verifies the contact of the bearing to the clutch brake. The clutch brake will be squeezed if the total pedal stroke slightly exceeds the movement required to move the yoke or fork 5 8 to 11 16 of an inch, which is the combined total of the 1 8 inch clearance between the yoke tips and wear pads and the half inch to 9 16 of an inch brake squeeze gap. In the event the brake is not being squeezed, do not change the half inch to 9 16 of an inch gap for the clutch brake or the 1 8 inch clearance for the bearing housing. Consult a Vehicle Manufacturer Service Manual. This concludes the clutch adjustment procedure for 14 inch and 15 and a half inch clutches. Next, we'll review the reset procedures for a self-adjusting clutch. The self-adjusting clutch is designed to maintain correct clutch adjustment for the life of the clutch assembly. However, if the need does arise for the clutch assembly to be reset or manually adjusted, use the following steps. Step one. Remove the self-adjusting mechanism. Step two, disengage the clutch. Step three, install a manual adjusting mechanism. Step four, manually adjust the clutch to meet specifications discussed in the clutch adjustment procedures. Step five, reinstall the self-adjusting mechanism. Ensure the adjusting arm is properly seated in the retainer stud. Step six, when reinstalling the self-adjusting mechanism, it may be necessary to manually ratchet the self-adjust mechanism 
so the worm gear is seated properly in the adjusting ring teeth. Again, the most important step to prolonging the life of a clutch is ensuring it is correctly adjusted. No matter if you're doing preventative maintenance or installing a new clutch, understanding how to validate the adjustment of the clutch and adjusting if required is vital to the operation of the vehicle. This concludes the Meritor Just-in-Time Clutch Adjustment and Reset Procedures video. Thank you.